All right, cool. So we're recording. Uh, we're going to get into the actual coding section of the discussion this evening. Uh, before I kick it off, are there any other questions that anyone else had um, up to this point in the class? Just make sure I've got the chat open as well. All right, cool. All right, so if we're good to go, let's get to it. Uh, so what is a programming language? Uh, let's us write lines of code to give the computer a set of instructions to perform to produce some kind of output. Uh, output is text to the screen, the creation of a file, uh, video graphics, uh, some sort of interaction with a user. Uh, the computer will only perform exactly the instructions you have given it to perform. Uh, computers are dumb. You have to tell them to basically everything you want it to do. And if you skip a step, the computer will skip the step. Um, however, if we give the computer a good set of instructions, it can typically handle tasks much faster than a human can. Uh, but that, that is the trade-off. It will only do exactly what you tell it to do. Uh, it won't, like, it has no mind of its own. It can't guess at what you want it to do. Uh, it's just going to do exactly what you told it to do. All right, so we're going to get into uh, the basic building blocks here. So values, every value is a piece of data or data type, and that data type determines how that value behaves. So some values are numbers like 86 or 2021. Uh, some values are text. Uh, we call them strings in JavaScript and in most languages. An uh, example of that would be Chris or Charles or uh, a, a full sentence. Uh, strings can typically be uh, longer. They can be just one letter. Uh, certain languages uh, may put limits on uh, what a string is or isn't. Uh, so like Java, if it's just one letter, it can actually just be a character to, or a char. It doesn't necessarily need to be a string. But in JavaScript, uh, it doesn't matter if it's the, a, a letter or if it's, uh, I mean, basically like the entire text of the Encyclopedia Britannica, if it's between double quotes, it's a string. Um, some values are functions, and we'll get into what functions are here later in the course. All right, so variables. Variables are named label identifiers for store, uh, storing values. Remember from math class variables X and Y, there are three ways to declare or create a variable in JavaScript. Uh, there is var, which is, says we don't use it anymore. So he, here's the caveat. When we write new code, we typically won't use var anymore. However, if you're looking at a tutorial online and maybe it's a few years old, uh, or once you get into the real world and um, you go on to a software project that's already been in existence for 10 years, right? Like that code was written, some of that code was written up to 10 years ago you're going to see older uh, conventions. And so like, you're going to learn some older conventions, typically like when you go through Code Platoon or as you um, follow along with different tutorials online um, and you will see them in, in real life. Like you'll see them out in the wild in existence in production code. Um, and you always have the opportunity to make code better uh, it's kind of like Smokey the Bear, right? Like we, we want to leave everything better than the way we found it. Um, so you'll see it. Maybe you have the opportunity to upgrade it to a more uh, specific modern syntax like let, um, which is similar to const. Let variable can be reassigned, but not redeclared. Um, if you don't understand what that sentence means yet, don't worry about it. We're going to get to it. Const cannot be reassigned and not accessible before they appear within the code. Var, let, and const are reserved keywords in JavaScript. You can't use them for anything other than declaring variables. And we still don't know quite what a variable looks like in JavaScript. Uh, all right, so variables. So var x equals hello world. Um, anyone want to take a stab at what type of variable this is? That is, yep, that's a string, right? And we've got numbers. This is a number, but it's a floating number, um, which means that there's decimal places. So, and we've got let, const, 
and or var, let, and cons, right? So we see an example of all three of them. And it doesn't have anything to do with what type of variable is it, what is basically being assigned to. Um, so like we could move let down here, we could move const up here. They all at the root are used for the same thing, uh, but they each have their own little different uniqueness to them. Um, so let, so let const and var are keywords that lets you initially declare a named variable. So we're saying, okay, whatever comes after this is going to be the name of our variable, right? So current year is the name of the variable. You must give variables a name. Variable names cannot begin with a number. So you can't put like 2021 current year. You could put current year three here if you wanted to. Uh, but a lot of times you won't see numbers in variable names at all, but you never want to start a variable with a number. Uh, an IDE will basically blow up when you do that. It'll tell you you're not allowed to do that. It'll give you an error message. Um, and so this is our value. Assigned to the variable, this type will be a number, right? So 2021 is a number. Now, what happens if we put double quotes around Right now, our number, even though it looks like a number and we read it as 2021, it's actually a string at that point. Right. And so uh, and I'll, I'll show you some differences here. That even though it may look very similar, it'll do different things to a computer. And that's what I talk about where basically everything, need, like you have to tell a computer everything that it needs to know because it can't guess at what you mean. Um, so, outputting a variable's value. So the console, so when we look at, um, uh, for anyone that's looked at Replit yet, or they've downloaded VS Code or any other type of modern IDE, um, there's always gonna be a console. And so console.log is a method, right? So dot log is a method on console. And what it's doing is I want you to take whatever information is here and log it to the console. Right, so basically and in software development, a log is literally just a journal or a record. It's typically a file that captures data, right? Like a server will have a log that will show all of the um, basically information that it's sent back and forth, all of the requests and responses that it's received and you can search through all of it. Um, with this console.log, we're just basically saying, hey, take whatever is in here, and print it out in the console so I can read it, All right? So console.log A plus empty space plus B. So that basically is gonna say um, A is equal to hello, B is equal to world. So this is, turns into hello, empty space, world, right? And so we console log that, we get hello world. Um, I'll explain the undefined underneath there. Um, you don't need to worry about that for right now. All right, any questions about uh, variables and values? Okay. Besides being called two different things, is there a difference between a number and a string? Obviously a number is a number, but if you were to turn a number into a string, would it be the same thing? So there, there are ways to change between types. Uh, so uh, maybe you need, a, so a string will be treated differently than a number by JavaScript. So, uh, and, and I'll, I'll give examples of that. Uh, in fact, I can give an example of it right now. Um, no time like the present. So we'll just create a new replet, node.js, and we'll do uh, April 25th, sesh one. Create that replet. All right, so let's go ahead and say let year equal 20, 20 or 21, right? Um, so now if I want to, so if I hit run, nothing happens, right? So it ran, but nothing happened. 
So I need to tell my software or my program here to log my, my variable year to the console. So there's 2021. Now, what's 2021 plus one? Not a trick question yet. 2022. Yep. So if I do that, right? So I'm taking year 2021 and I'm adding one to it. 2022. Now let's make it a string. What happened? It's reading it like text. Yep. It's reading it like text. And it was even nice enough to convert the number one to text for me. And it just added, added it to the end. Right. And so, and just like in the example, we can say A equals hello, let B equal world, A plus B. What's going to happen here? There's no space. There's, space. There's no space, right? So what's going to happen? I'm just going to get hello world slammed together, right? There it is. Again, computers are dumb. Like, I don't want hello world as one word. I want hello space world. But if I don't go out of my way to tell it that, it's not going to do it for me. Like, it does not do anything that I don't tell it to do. All right, so there's my hello world. All right, and so, and, and also a lot of, so depending on the programming language, um, and there, so there's a concept called linting, which is basically like in um, JavaScript world, we're going to use prettier. Um, there's probably fairly minimal linting or no linting on um, like Replit. Like it doesn't care if your code looks like this or like this, right? But if I were to take this, so this is Visual Studio Code. This will be what you use in um, uh, in Code Platoon, or uh, most people will use this as a um, their first editor. Uh, so if I come in here into this directory and I open up, these are all each one of these is a different file, right? So. If I look at, we'll just grab FizzBuzz here, right? And this is a algorithm that eventually you'll have to solve. So if I take this, that won't work, but, and go like this, when I save this file, notice it automatically moved it back there for me, right? And so, and that's called linting, right? And so um, in Replit, it's actually a little bit more difficult to write code than it is like when I go to my day job because there isn't what we call linting there, but I use a plugin called Prettier. And this is a, probably the most popular one. I mean, 20, 21 million installs in VS Code alone. Um, and so every time I save my file, every time I copy and paste, um, and basically I, I set it up so that I format when I click away from it. Uh, and basically, so I don't, it, it allows the, all of these little things to be fixed and put back into place for me without me having to make concert, uh, like a conscious effort to do so. However, as you're learning and you're doing this in Replit, um, you will have to, like, I mean, it is a little bit more difficult, right? Like, so when I hit save here, I uh, just hit Command S on my Mac. It didn't move this back for me automatically. So this single quote is the exact same thing as this double quote. Now there is, again, like when I talk about linters, there is style guides and style formatting that like if I do this over here, um, so if I say, let example, um, close to example, equal Charles, and I save this, 
it automatically moved it back to double quotes for me, right? Because that's what my style guide is set to. Typically in a variable, um, it's gonna be single quotes. If you're doing something like writing React, um, it's going like, you know, so we start getting into terms like JSX, um, then, and you're using a variable in, or a string inside of a, uh, of JSX, then the auto formatting will move it back to single quotes for you. But for purposes, notice when I do, so if I have one and one and one, like it does not recognize these, right? Like that, that's the issue. And this is why double quotes are more popular for strings, because if I say, hey, Charles, but I want to make it Charles's, right? And I put that in there notice I now get an error, right? And so it says unterminated string literal. It's looking for another end to this. And so I can escape it, but what's even easier than doing that is if I do this, then I'm good to use this in here, All right? And it'll probably still warn me. So it's just saying unknown word because I have a spell checker built in here because I can't spell to save my life. Um, so, and, and that's the other thing too, is like, because we type like this, like this isn't like the same as writing something in Microsoft Word, like you're going to have things that aren't words or like abbreviations like r is short for array like you'll see that all the time num is number um and, and so it helps and like this just warns me saying like hey we don't know what this word is but it doesn't throw any errors or block me from doing anything or try and auto correct it right because like if this tried to auto correct every time i type type this and change it into modified array like i would lose my mind right like you never want something to change your code without you knowing about it. And moving things around space-wise isn't a big deal because especially in JavaScript, like even if I take this and cram this all the way over here and put a bunch of spaces in here, when I run this software, it's still gonna run, right? Um, but I don't want it to look this way because like if someone were to come in and review the code, like I would expect to get feedback saying like, look, you need to go out and delete all these empty spaces because how much worse does it make it for you trying to learn if you're trying to learn something that basically looks like this, right? Like what, what is going on here? So it makes it very difficult for the user uh, or whoever is looking at your code to figure out what's going on. Cause we've got to scroll around things aren't lined up visually. But when I do this, I can look at the entire method is all crammed right in the same space. Um, I know that each time I'm doing a new block of code, like it is indented and it's visually organized, right? So again, this still works. It's just harder to read, right? Like I'm going from here to here to here. Now I've got to go all the way over here and I've got to call all the way back here. Um, there's also little cheats that you can use inside your uh, IDEs that you don't get to use in Replit, but like you notice how many like parentheses and uh, curly braces that I have, um, you know, basically square brackets are all over the place. And so I have a plugin that every time I nest inside another level, it changes the color, right? And so that way, if I'm missing one of these, I get an error message, it turns it bright red. It says, hey, we were expecting something else. I can go through here and be like, okay, here's the opening one. Like that's opening, that closes it, open, close. So in here I'm down to my map, open, open, close, open, close, close, open, close, close. And I can see now that I'm missing a purple one down here. And I can put that back in. And so that helps me keep track of things visually. And we'll, we'll talk. So there, there's basically eight sessions where we have coursework laid out. And then the ninth session is typically where I'll go over uh, some, some of the harder challenges, the employee data. Um, I'll talk to you about some of the tools that you can use. It's more of a, like a, a professional development session. Uh, I'll give, try and give some tips and tricks and explain some of the stuff that I use throughout the course. All right, so we'll minimize that and we'll come back over here. All right, 
So, and this is, um, so let, let's talk about the let and const here real quick. And just to show you, so if I change this to var and var and I hit run, nothing changes, right? And now same thing, if I change this to const, const, right? I hit run, nothing changes. Now, if I change these back, and so also replit tip, if you're on a Windows, it should be Control D. If you're on a Mac, Command D. Uh, and this will work in an ID or in Replit. And you highlight uh, basically other instances of the same word. So like right now, you can see I've got two cursors. So I can clean them both up at the same time. And But don't forget, once you're done changing what you need to, that you need to hit the Escape key to go back to one cursor. Because if you don't, basically do this, like change that to that. And I come down here and start typing. Now I'm typing in two different places at the same time. So when you're done with a multi-cursor, hit escape. So if I now, so I've taken let and I've said let A equal hello, right? So this is what instantiates A. This is what basically assigns A. So and I said instantiate, and I apologize because that's that's some jargon that you have to learn. Basically, let A brings A into existence. You instantiate the variable. It does not exist in the world of this soft, this basically function or soft code that I'm writing until I say let A var A or const A. And then also I, at the same time, and this is very common, I'm saying let A equal hello. These are actually two separate actions, right? So I can say let A, and then I can say A equals hello, right? And I still get hello world, right? Now I can come down here and I can say let A equal goodbye. What's going to get printed out? You want to take a stab? The last thing that you put in. Yep. So computers read from top to bottom. So it reads line one, it says, okay, I now have a variable called A. It doesn't have any value. Um, now I'm saying, okay, my variable A has a value of hello. Now I'm creating variable B and I'm getting it, giving it a value of world right away. Now I'm copying over A uh, for, for hello and I'm storing the value goodbye in there, right? Goodbye world. Now let's learn about the difference between let and const. So this is what we talked about where A cannot be redeclared. So if I say let A equal goodbye, then I never know with Replit, but I would hope that this would throw an error. Yep. So the identifier A has already been declared. I cannot redeclare it. All right. But I can reassign it. So I can reassign the value of A to goodbye just by doing this. Now, const is a, it basically means constant cannot be redeclared. So I can't do this. All right? Constant identifier A has already been declared. Now, I also shouldn't be able to do this. Like I cannot redeclare it and I cannot reassign it, right? Type error, assignment to constant variable. So as soon as I change this to const, I can know it, it will always be hello, right? And I cannot reassign it to something else. This is very useful. In this, you should always use const wherever you can because you're protecting your data from the basically the the software from changing it now it's very easy when you are writing code because it's just you writing the code right but once we get out into real software development like i said i work on a team with 15 other software developers and we're all writing code for the same piece of software we're all crossing lines we're all uh, touching the same parts of the application, 
And what this does is this prevents someone from changing data on you without you knowing it, right? And so by default, we always wanna try and use const. And then if we need to, we use let, right? So if you don't want your value to change or be reassigned, you use const. If you declare a value that like, let's say that um, I know that I'm writing a, a piece of software that is either going to say hello or goodbye and it needs to switch back and forth between the two, then I know that I wanna use let. But um, we try and use const wherever we can. Any questions about that? Okay. And I'm, so, I'm sorry, uh, I forgot who asked the original question. I don't know if that was you, Steve, but did that answer what you were asking? Like when we were talking about the difference between 2021 as a number and as a string? It did. Okay, awesome. So let me pull this out of the way. All right, so data types, uh, the basics, numbers, uh, let age equal 34, strings, cons first name Tom, cons first name Tom, cons first name Tom. Double quotes, single quotes, we've talked about this, the exact same thing. You can also use back ticks. Um, this is uh, used for inline string uh, concatenation or interpolation. I'll show you exactly what I mean by that here uh, once we go back to the replit. Booleans are true or false. This is what we use to help or basically make it look like computers are making decisions. We basically end up having to build out chains of true and false, um, like basically conditional statements that work off of true or false. And if something true happens, we do uh, the instructions A. If, we, if false happens, we do instructions B. And then we can um, extend that out further where multiple decisions can be made. So we can say, um, if the value that comes in is three, uh, say hello. If the value that comes in is four, say goodbye. If the value that comes in, um, say uh, I mean, Guten Morgen. Uh, if the value is six, say hola, right? And so if statements can be extended out to have basically as many types of branches as you want, um, there are some things that we'll get into that we help to control that to make those things readable so you don't just end up with this big long list of decisions. Uh, we want to try and write those efficiently as possible. Undefined. A undefined variable has been declared, but no value has been assigned to it yet. Right. So what that and then null, null means there is explicitly no value. These two things are not the same. Right. They, they look the same. Um, it's a, a different concept, but let's go ahead and hop into uh, the REPL again here. So if I do, and also another REPL note, so I don't know if anyone saw me do this, but if you put two slashes in front of a piece of code, that is creating a comment. Comments are no longer read by the application, right? So I took let b equals world and commented it out. So if I run this, I should get an error, right? B is not defined. Well, yeah, it is, it's right here. Anything that is commented out, the computer treats it like it doesn't exist. It's just there for you um, to make it, uh, like if we write a particularly tricky piece of code or as you're first starting off, you keep your notes with your code uh, because you will experience this. You'll write a piece of code, you'll shut your computer down for the night, you'll open it up the next day and be like, what the heck did I write? I have no idea what's going on here anymore. And so leaving yourself a plain text description of what you were thinking or what you were doing when you had to walk away from it will help you a ton when you come back to uh, picking the problem back up. So, and the shortcut for that, again, on a Windows would be like control forward slash, I believe. You'll have to try it out. Uh, on a Mac, it is command forward slash, and that gives you no like comments on comments. You can highlight multiple lines. Um, without using the command forward slash, if you just put two slashes, everything after, right? And then if I do this, like it, it still will, like basically the shortcut just always throws it at the beginning of the line. 
Um, there's also a multi-line comment, which is super helpful when you're like, if we're gonna write steps like, right, two, three, four, right? So everything in between the forward slash and the asterisk and then the closing asterisk and forward slash becomes a comment. So you don't have to sit here and keep doing this over and over again. So um, if we were to take just A here, and I'll comment this out, and we'll say console.log A, right? So I'm expecting that I would just see goodbye at this point. <clears throat> so if I comment this out, I'm just expecting to see hello. Oops, um, I've got it down here too, multiple places. Delete it here. So there's my hello. And now if I do this, I just have A and I console dialog A. I get it's hard to see, sorry, but this says undefined, right? Which means that A exists, uh, but nobody's told me what you want A to be yet. So it's, just, it's literally undefined, it has not been defined yet. Now, if I do this, Right, and notice how it knew, like, you'll notice, so this is called IntelliSense. And so as you're typing uh, within Replit and like IDEs are a lot better than Replit, like it will give you different keywords that you can use to complete your line. Uh, and I believe it'll even do it. So if I say, bravo, Right, and because one letter is tough, but if I do this, see how it picks up, it says Bravo, let Bravo string, right? So it's, like it's, it's helping me out, letting me know what I'm getting into. I can pick it, it'll auto-complete for me, right? And when uh, computers, again, uh, were originally filled out like on punch cards, these big giant machines with the glass tubes and everything, um, and it was very expensive to calculate any piece of information. Um, you're basically, you, everyone like let X, right? Let Y, like it was very important to keep everything as brief as possible and smash it into space. Modern programming, right? Like it's the, the, the joke, like you've got more computing power in your pocket and your cell phone than like they used to put a man on the moon. Well, uh, you've got a modern PC, a modern MacBook, um like go crazy with your variable names uh this is a bad variable name right so because if i say let x right and i say if i say let x equals 32 right that's not terrible but let's say that i have 432 lines of code in here right and now i'm all the way down here and I say X is Charlie, right? So now I've changed X from a number to a string. And I don't, and so like when I go down here, even further down, and I don't know what's going on, right? And so I just, I pop into line 96 and I see X, right? And I see this here on a line of code. Can you tell me what this is without knowing what I typed in on like line 40 and line five? You can't because it's, it's just X. You, you don't, it's, it's gonna be a total crapshoot what comes out the other end when I console.log this. And now I've gotta go look in here and I've gotta go all the way up to here to figure out what's going on with it. Especially if I was expecting a number and the word Charlie pops out. So what I would do is something like if I know, like I want X to be a name, what I would say is like applicant first name, right? Charlie. So now when I'm down here and I see console.log applicant dot, or I'm sorry, applicant first name. I think that's what I called it, right? Uh, applicant first name, right? Just by looking at this, I know what I should be expecting to come out when I hit run, right, Charlie. And now that being said, up here, if someone came in and accidentally changed applicant first name 
to 32, right? And I'm down here and I'm like, okay, applicant first name, I hit the button and 32 pops out right away. That's telling me there's probably some sort of issue with the code, right? And so giving thing, and this is a, something you'll hear all the time with software development. Naming is hard, right? Like looking at a piece of data that you own and that you have to move through a system and then try figuring out how you can name it and make it concise and descriptive of the data that can be held inside it, um, it can be very tough depending on the situation. And again, we see it like just one line of code, one variable, um, it becomes a little bit, uh, like a lot of the things I say may not stick out, but like I said, like, so this is um, something like this where we're up to 84 lines of code with the example in there and, and seeing all the different things. Uh, let's see here, right? And like we start seeing, like you can see the colors, like the different boxes that we have and pointing to different sets of data, current employee, and average bonus. Right, like if this was X and like this was Y, it would be very difficult when you look at your at code to understand what's happening here. So we wanna make sure that we give good names. All right, um, so that was that. And all right, any questions? Oh, I'm sorry, one last thing here. Uh, so lastly, right, we did, let A equal hello, uh, let B equal world, and we do um, A plus uh, empty space plus B. So we talked about single quotes, double quotes. Let's talk about backticks real quick here. So when I run this, I get hello world. So with backticks, you get inline string interpolation. And what that means is that when I put back ticks in, I can do something like this, right? So notice how this is a different color, right? But at the end of the day, I still get the same thing, right? And so a lot of, and this is typically easier because you're, you can write it just like a sentence, right? Because if we have A plus B plus, right? All right, so I'm doing the same thing again. All right, but you can see like this is a little bit more natural than having to keep adding the pluses, having to add the spaces on either side. Because uh, what happens a lot is like they'll forget to put the space in here or on the other side. You know, we run it, right? And it does the same thing, but like it starts to get smashed. This is in the way, of course, but like things get smashed together. Um, this is typically the easiest way to do it. And this again, back ticks gives you the, the inline string concatenation. Uh, if I don't have any variables in here, then you typically want to use double quotes. You only want to do that if you're going to be putting the variables. And again, when you go back to like a linter and a real IDE, if you use back ticks and typed out the sentence and didn't have a uh, a variable called inside it, like when you save, it would typically save it, like turn it back to double quotes for you and tell you that you don't need it. 
All right, so that's that. All right, how are we doing with um, this? Good, ready to move on. What is a concatenation? Concatenation is just fancy computer speak for adding to uh, like two strings together, basically. All right, so this is, um, this is string concatenation right here, right? We're, we're like appending two different strings together. Thank you. Just don't ask me to spell it. Uh, right. So next is arrays. So now we're getting a little bit more complicated. Uh, arrays basically hold um, a, a list, list like objects that store values. So a little typo to clean up. So we see let tech companies equal Apple, Facebook, Microsoft, and Google. Uh, being a little more specific, can someone want to take a stab at what this in a, is an array of? Tech companies. Uh, it is tech companies, but how? What? Like, what are those values? Are they strings? There's all string values. Yep. So they're string values. So if I were to describe this to you, I would say give me an array of strings, right? So I can ask for an array of numbers. Uh, in JavaScript, I can ask for a, 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 a mixed array where some of those values can be strings, some of them can be numbers, some of them can be Booleans. Uh, like statically typed languages like Java or C Sharp will lose their mind if you try and do that. Um, like you have to specifically say like if you want an array, you want a array of numbers and you can only put numbers in there. Um, but this is a dynamic language, so we can put diff different information inside the array. Array methods, pre-built functions included in JavaScript. We're going to be using these. We're going to be talking about them a lot. Um, let me just do this. Uh, Mozilla, MDN. So... Mozilla developer.mozilla.org. Um, so the Mozilla uh, developer guides, you like as you're learning in this class, um, so much of what you do is going to be right here. Uh, so like if I say, even if I Google it, so like if I say um, JS uh, dot map, right? So developer.mozilla.org array prototype map, right? And so, and here is an example of how to map through an array. Don't worry if you don't, like if you've never seen map before, but like here's an example of an array. Um, here are all of the different built-in methods that you can do on uh, array. And to be honest with you, there are some of these I have never used. I have no idea what they do. But if I ever came into a situation where I need them, like this is exactly where I would come to read about it, right? Uh, so if I need to do a map, which is kind of like a for loop, say the map method creates a new array populated with the results of a calling, uh, with the results of calling a provided function on every element in the calling array. So it's basically like doing a for loop where we um, basically do a operation on every piece of information. So what this is actually doing is saying x and then 4x, x times 2. So we would come in here, x equals 1, multiply it by 2. Then we'd say x equals 4, 4 times 2, 9 times 2, 16 times 2. And at the end of, the, of its operation, it, we would print out what that looks like, and we would see 2, 8, 18, and 32, right? And that's what map does. And we'll talk more about it later. Just know that the MDN web docs are where all of your answers lie. Um, you can find answers elsewhere, but we can't guarantee the validity of them. Some places lie, some places don't lie intentionally. Uh, sometimes you don't know the experience level of the person solving the problem, or maybe they solved the problem 15 years ago and JavaScript has changed since then. This is the source of truth uh, while you're working on, while you're learning JavaScript, right? So pre-built uh, functions included in JavaScript. Uh, some of these, we can tell what they do right away, like length. So if I were to do uh, length, 
um, it's going to tell me the length of it. Pop, push, shift, unshift are ways to like, just by looking at it, it doesn't really tell you what it's doing, but what it's doing is uh, removing or adding elements into the array uh, to either side of the array. Um, we've then got uh, index of and splice. These are different ways to modify the array. And as you can see, like this is just a short uh, thing. Like, look, these are all, all of them basically, and probably like 40 or 50 of them just on an array. And then um, let's go ahead and take a look at that real quick. So if I want to take uh, an array here, so let's go let names equal and see how, so I forgot to put my quote mark there and see how it basically it's a different color. That's warning me that I'm not doing it the way I want to. Also, uh, so like typically typing or like in a, um, like a, like a, a word doc or whatever, if I highlight something and I hit a button, like it replaces it with the key that I just typed in. In a editor, if you are using some, so like if I just hit the letter K, it'll replace it. But if I am doing like quotes, or parentheses or curly braces, something that we, or like the, the square bracket, something that we use to enclose something, it won't replace it, it'll actually wrap it for you. So that'll save you some time when you forget things. Same thing, and I can keep going, right? Like, but as soon as I hit something like a, a slash that doesn't wrap it, it makes it go away. And same thing, like I can grab this whole thing, and wrap it and make the whole thing a string. Oops, and notice, so I, I, I meant to open, uh, do an opening parens, I did the closing one and it replaces it because it's not a opening wrapping element. But if I do the opening one, see how I get them at the beginning and the end. All right, so now when you access something inside an array, uh, we use what's called box notation. So computers, start counting from zero. Uh, you don't have to take yourselves off mute, but say that like three times out loud. Computers count from zero, computers count from zero, computers count from zero. What is the first element in my array of names? Todd. No, for, first element is this. Uh, yeah, Charles, I'll right. take first. Right, so here, here's where it gets tricky. Charles is in plain English is the first element, but it is in the zero index position. So you, you are right there, right? And then basically, if I keep going, Todd is in the, is in the one index position, even though it's the second element, Mo is two, Nugget is three. How many elements do I have in here? Four but the last element is in the third index position because computers always count from zero. Humans, where do we start counting one? Computers start at zero. If you tell the computer from start, start counting from one, you chop off the first element in the array. And, and so this will be a constant back and forth in your brain as you start counting from the first element which means the computer is counting from the zero index. So if I want to see the, all of my names, right? Notice how they're, they're green in here. I get the, the box wrap. That means that they're inside an array. Let me just comment this stuff out. And I'll make these REPLs available. I'll, I'll drop the link at the end of the night. So, and I don't delete these and you can have access to them. So now if I want to see the first element, what index position do I want? Zero. 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 So when I do names box zero, now I just get Charles, right? Now, if I want to see the fourth one, 
and I type in four, I'm going to get an error, right? Well, it's not really an error, it's undefined because I have not created anything in the index position of four up here, right? That doesn't exist. And so if I want to see the fourth element, I need to do go to the correct index position, which is number three, right? And so if someone were to ask me, and this is easy because there's four elements, but let's say there was a, a, every name in the world in here. How many names in the world are there? Start counting. I don't know, but I can run dot length and I get four of them, right? And same thing now, I can do, Right. So now what I've done is I've mapped through every single element in my array. And I said, okay, in my list, in my array of names, take one name and I want you to do this to it. And all I'm doing is the same thing I was doing with hello world up here is some basic string concatenation. And I'm doing name, which is a string plus is the coolest. Right. And then I print out Charles is the coolest, Todd is the coolest, Mo is the coolest. Right. And this is just string concatenation, but if this was a array of numbers, like I could do mathematical operators in here, um, all, all different things to basically get to different answers. Um, and then same thing here. So if I do console.log memes.pop. So, and this is, Normally this populates with stuff, but it looks like it's struggling a little bit tonight, right? So what I've done is I've taken the last item off here and I've popped it off the end, right? So that's the dot pop. So if I now look at console.log names, right? Now inside my array is only Charles, Todd, and Mo because I've physically removed nugget from my array, right? And so same thing. Now, if I do console.log names.push PD, Right now, PD has been added to the end of my array. Right. And so we can, and so I could even go through. So in my map, I could do uh, like in names, I could pop off the last name. And so, like, basically, by the time it gets done mapping through everything, I've just gone and popped off every name in there. The array is empty and all the names are out separate on their own as pieces of data. Uh, and then shift and unshift do the exact same things. They just add things to the front, right? Um, so let's see here. I'm sorry, I got some questions coming in. Yes. So pop and push always add and subtract from the end. Shift and unshift will always add and subtract from the beginning. So there are four separate operations. And there's a challenge where we'll get to play with all four of them at the same time. Quick question. Yes. If you put that pop from line 15 before line 13, will it remove that nugget is the coolest? Yes. So console.log is only a snapshot, right? So like when I ran the console.log up here, um, but you're, well, so I'm doing the length, right? So if I just do names, Right, I get Charles, Todd, Mo, and Nugget. So, computer comes in, we instantiate names, we assign it the value of the four names. We console.log names. It, it doesn't look at what names is down here after we do all this other stuff. It's just a snapshot of what's going on right now. 
Yeah. And that's I was looking that. at the order that it reached from top to bottom. You know, the the nugget still appeared in the top portion, but then going forward, it was gone. Yeah. So I, yeah, because I'm taking a snapshot, right? Okay. So if I move this up here, I'm popping it off before before it runs this line of code, right? So and the same thing, like if I move the push PD up here, then he's in there, right? And, and also notice that basically like this is mapping and it's doing this but it's not saving it anywhere right like because now when i look at just names again it's just back to the names right and so like i could do something like this and say but cool names Right. And so now, like, I've got a separate variable here. And so I can say, um, like, console.log, or we'll do coolnames.pop, right? And then console.log. I'll just do this, move this down here. Right. And so now, is basically like I've got a whole separate uh, array of data. I've got two two arrays, names and cool names, and now I've actually saved it so that I can continue to operate on it and do other things with it. So, and it, again, if you don't understand all of it right off the bat, it's not a, a huge deal. We're going to be doing this lots of times over the next three weeks. Like a lot of the challenges, like are going to deal with loops and um and basically modifying data all right and so uh, data types objects uh, objects are a structure of data that can contain many values using a comma separated key value pair all right so arrays will look like this they're all because you have an index value unless I physically move this to another part of the array with an operation. Every time I look at names, Charles will always be in the first position unless I forcibly change it, right? Like there is a guaranteed order to arrays. You, you, every time I look at names zero, I'm going to see Charles. Every time I look at names one, I'm going to see top, unless I do something to actually change the way this, like what's in here. Um, Next is a object. And objects are probably the most complex data storage that we're going to deal with in this in this class. Like you start getting into like linked lists, that, that's something you won't even deal with in code platoon. Um, so I can say uh, let applicant equal a object, right? And so objects, so uh, variables, we are basically, or strings, is, there's nothing there. There's nothing wrapping them. It's just the double quotes, numbers. You can put a number in there. If you want to declare an array, you're going to use square brackets. If you want to declare an object, you're going to use curly braces. And we'll, we'll get into talking about nesting eventually. But so I can say, as an applicant, I want a first name, Charles. Last name, Kubiak, age, 32, um, has pets, true, right? And so this is a uh, an object. Now let me do this, let me just format it here real quick. All right, and so and this is what are, these are what's an object holds a series of key value pairs. All right, so first name is a key. The value is Charles. 
The last name is a key. The value for that key is Kubiak. Age is a key. The value is 32. Has pets is the key. True is the value. So these do not have an index position, right? So like if here, like if I want to look at the first element of an array, I do name zero and I'll get name zero or I'll, I'll get Charles. So if I look at um, console.log applicant zero, it's going to tell me I have no idea what you're talking about. That's undefined. However, if I say applicant first name, and I may have to put that in quotes. Yeah. Now I'm saying, give me the value for the key of applicant first name. And now we get Charles, right? And so same thing, like if I change my key to age, right, I get 32. If I change it to as pets, I should get true, right? I get true. And so that's how we access information inside a uh, inside an object. And we won't dig too far into it right now, but like we can do uh, both arrays and objects can be nested. So I can say that, and then I can say one, two, three, four, five, right? And now I've got an array inside my array, right? So if I do, just comment this out for a second. So if I do console.log names, I'll get my entire array here. Whoops, didn't want to do that. And so if I do names three, right, I should just get nugget. Whoops. Oh, what did I do here? I deleted the S. I get nugget. Now, if I do names four, right, I get the fourth element in my array is this entire array, right? So how do I get the number three? Anyone want to give me a uh take a stab at that isn't it uh console log names for oh square brackets so it's square bracket four and then another square bracket the third spot so what's the you, you're right what's the third spot so um, the third spot's gonna well it's gonna be two yep yeah, and you can call these square brackets or uh, even shorter is like when we're we're describing, I would say names box four, box two, right? Because like if we delete that, we're just creating a square box, right? So box four, box two, and I would hope to see three get output, right? So that's there. That's how we get to nested arrays. And same thing with objects. Right, so I can do, um, I, I could create a another object in here, right? So I could say like pet info and do like pet one, right? Name, Todd, age, 14. Pet two, name Nugget, age two, All right? And so we, I mean, we can keep going as far as like how we nest them. Sorry, I need a comma here. I, um, why is it that you don't have to like redefine your second object? Right. So you have like let applicant and then your object. And then like you said, you wanted to nest pet info. Why do you not like, why is it that you don't have to um, define pet info? I'll, I'll show you here one second. Okay. Thank you. Yep. And, and basically, I mean, what it's going to come down to is that this, this is all one object still. Right. So this is inside applicant, like pet 
one and pet your pet info does not exist on its own. Okay, that makes sense. So when you have like, I don't guess I don't know if that's called like a squiggly box. Is that just what indicates it as an object? Yes. Yeah. It, it, yeah. It's the curly braces. Curly braces. Okay, thank you. Yeah. And so this is basically. I think this out one too many. Oh come on! Don't do that to me. There we go. So this is basically like, so if I want to start mining for information in here, right? Uh, so I can say has pets run it's true. And now if I do pet info, right? I'm returning all of these objects, right? So lead applicant is the defined object. This whole thing is lead applicant. That's why I don't have to redeclare these. This is a key first name that gives me the value of Charles. Ped info is a key that gives me a, a, a value of another object, right? That has the key of pet one, which has a value of an object for name and age and pet two, which is an object that has a value for um, basically name and age for a second pet, right? And so it's the same principle where I can now say pet info, pet one, right? And I just get Todd, right? And I can keep going. So if I just wanna know Todd's name or the name of pet one, Right, then I, I finally, I so I've gone inside here, saw pet info, gone inside here, saw pet one, gone inside pet one, saw name. And as I chain, and I can just keep going with this. And same thing inside an object, I can also do, um, right, places lived, right? And so, oops, need a comma again. And now I can say, I'm gonna create an array, right? Michigan, California, Arizona, Illinois, right? And so now same thing, I can come back out here to applicant and I wanna look at the key of places lived, right? And there's an array of the four different states I've lived in and now, places lived is an array. So if I wanna know the second place I lived at, which is California, whoops, so that'd be index value of one, there it is, right? So uh, a lot of what we do is basically digging into data structures and retrieving the data that I need, right? And so I could now say something like console.log, um, so we'll do back ticks and we'll say first name, space, last name, um, has lived in places lived dot length, different states. Oops, first name is not defined. Why is it not defined? Oh, sorry. Anyone want to take a stab at what I just did wrong? Yeah, it's square. Uh, it is square, but so I forgot to access applicant, right? Like I was just going straight to the keys and it's, it's telling me first name is dot defined. It doesn't, outside of applicant, there is no variable that says let first name, right? So and see how I console logged up here. 
I need to do the same thing in here. And I basically skipped a step. So I can put these in a bracket, put it in quotes and say applicant dot first name, same thing. Applicant box last name and same thing here. Um, this will probably go like this, I believe. Charles Kubiak has lived in four different states, right? And that's what I was looking for. And also, uh, newsflash, I will get it wrong. Like, I will make typos. I will not know the answer to every single question you ask me. It's impossible to know everything in this line of work. I will do the best I can to give you an informed answer. Uh, if it is important and I cannot answer, I will, even if it's after class or whatever, I will go find resources. I will address it as soon as possible in the intro to coding. So that is something that I will work towards to make this experience as um, basically informative as possible for everyone in the class. But just a heads up, I will get things wrong. I will make typos. Um, do not be shy. If you see me doing something wrong, shout it out. Uh, save me. Um, because I will do things like this. It just, it's impossible not to. All right. So that is kind of like our first taste of what a object looks like. So right, it, just in the kind of a plane is like key one, value one, key two, value two, and so on. Uh, let employee name, Ruthie Cohen, title, cashier, salary, 50,000. So we see that we can pull different values in here. Um. Uh, yes. Quick question: Are we able to change like the uh, the values and the uh, objects, or do we have to go in and physically change them? Can we write write a code? Oh yeah, so you can you can remove things, you can add things. Uh, so like if I were to do um, like uh, let's see here, so let's go ahead and do applicant um, first name equals Charlie. And now if I do uh, console.log applicant. So see how the, up here it was Charles and now it's Charlie. Um, same thing. Uh, if, and so that is finding a key that exists, the same thing. So like if I do uh, applicant, and then say um, favorite food. And I say burrito. Now it should add it in there, right? Now I've got a key of favorite food in there, right? So we we can we will modify data as we go. Okay, thank you. Does does that only work because you had you put let if you put const applicant. Would you not be able to change any of that? Nope. So what it is, is that, so object is a little bit different than a, um, like a string. Cause like when a string, you're basically to change it, you're reassigning it. Like when we were doing it up here, we were reassigning it. Same thing, like I'm pretty sure I can manipulate a string. So like I can slice a letter off the end of it because I'm not redeclaring it. I'm doing an operation on it. Uh, but the same thing. So like if I do, if I change this back to let, right? And then I say all of this stuff on applicant. And then I come down here and I say applicant equals 22 or 222 and say console.log applicant right like i'm gonna just reassign and completely copy over what applicant is it's no longer an object now it's just the number 222 and if i say const applicant now i'll blow up right all of this stuff still happens while it's an object i'm moving data in moving it out changing it but i cannot reassign it to something else Right. So because as soon as I get down to this line of code where I try and change applicant to 222 it says assignment to constant variable. So I'm not reassigning data when I'm doing these things. I'm actually manipulating the data that's in there. Makes sense. Uh, Thanks. Yeah. And, and if you don't get that yet, not a big deal. Um, 
like I said, uh, objects are going to be one of the more complicated pieces of data that we deal with in this class. Uh, it's, the, it's the top of the mountain for us. All right. So let me just see here real quick. Functions, control flow. We may do, um, yeah, so we may do um, loops uh, starting tomorrow. Um, there's no specific hurry uh, because we do have um, that extra session at the end. Uh, sometimes they do cram a lot into these first ones. Sorry. So operators. So description, uh, operator examples. So again, um, the operator, like the equal sign is what um, basically this is one part. This is a stand instantiating a variable. This equal sign is assigning the variable to your newly instantiated variable. And again, these don't need to be done on the same line, but most commonly they are just for brevity. Um, so if we do let a equals five, and then we do a plus four, we console log, we see that nine. Um, use this one fairly often in your own code. It is for assigning a variable easily confused with comparison operators, double equals or triple equals, which is equals or strictly equal. Um, so basically a single equal you use to assign a variable, double or triple equal is when you use, you compare two different pieces of information to each other. And we'll have lots of examples of that as well. So these are mostly for pretty basic, like addition, subtraction, multiplication. Exponent is the double asterisk. Uh, division is just the forward slash. Modulus, uh, which returns the remainder. So 10 divided by 10 modulus three is one, right? Because three times three is nine, one is left over. So this is just the, the modulus operator. Uh, same thing. So if you did like 10 modulus four, the remainder would be two because two times four is eight, 10 minus eight is two. That's what would be left over. So logic operators. So these are different than uh, arithmetic operators. Um, so this is equal or strict equal, right? So in the example, A equals four and B equals two, A double equals B is false. But again, that bang operator, right? So when we see a bang, that means not equal. It means the opposite. Um, and so A bang double equals B is true because A is not equal to B, right? Greater than, less than, right? So is A greater than uh, B, that's true. A four is greater than two, but it's not less than, it's false. And the same thing, greater than or equal. So that's just the same symbols with an equal. Um, these are exclusive, these are inclusive. And then the logic operators. So these will be the bane of your existence for like the first year of your career. Um, and means that both values, you're expecting both values to be true, or is saying as long as one of them is true, you will return true. So let's go ahead and I'll, I'll break this out real quick in the REPL. All right, so let's say let A equal eight, let B equal four, let C equal two, right? And so we want to do console.log. And if we say um, is A greater than B, and if I, if I return this, let me just comment this stuff out. What did I, oh, because I've already identified it. So let's do X, Y, and Z. Is X greater than Y? That is true, right? And now 
if I do and if I say is z greater than y, this should resolve to true and this should resolve to false, right? And so because either side returns false, it's going to return false. Now, if I say or, so this is saying, are both of these true, yes or no? Uh, and then this is saying, are either one of these true? Right and now we go back to true. So it's saying this is true, this is false. Are either of these values true? Yes, this is true. Okay, console.log true. This one again is saying, is this true? Yes. Is this true? No. Okay, then return false. On our keyboards, which one is the or function? Which key? It's the pipe operator, which is right above enter. It's shift backslash, and it's two of them. Right. So, yep. Right, and so, and with and, uh, basically like if you had 10 different conditions to check and you only wanted true if all 10 conditions were true, you could keep going basically. Like you could keep doing and and and. And same thing if you have um, like you have 10 conditions to check but you only need one of them to be true, then you could just do or, 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 and then if one of them does, it's true. Now where it gets tricky is, let's say that you have conditions one through 10 and either condition one can be true and nothing else has to be true and you want true, or if condition three is true, you also need condition six and seven to be true, right? And so now we have to start thinking about like, how are we gonna use our and operators? How are we gonna use our or operators? How are we gonna split this out into conditional logic? And that's basically all software programming is, is basically writing these chains of logic as we guide the computer step-by-step step through what we want it to do. All right, so back to this. All right, functions. So earlier in here, uh, we talked about console.log, right? And right here. So the console.log method. Now, a method and a function are very similar and you will hear the words used kind of interchangeably. Um, and you haven't heard of the word yet, most likely, uh, at least not in class, but there is such a thing called a class. So console is a class. Log.log is a function inside of the console class. A function inside a class, we refer to it as a method. So dot .log is a method on, um, uh, on console, sorry. When you are not writing inside a class, which we won't be using any classes in this, um, this class, like that's when we start to get into object-oriented programming, which they will start to cover in Code Platoon. It's basically like the foundation for most modern software. Um, when you are writing a, a function outside of a class, it is just a function. When you are writing a function inside a class, it is a method, you'll hear, I mean, if, if you tell me, look at my method, look at my function, I'll know what you mean either way. Pretty much everyone does. Uh, it's not like huge uh, vocabulary to get hung up on, uh, but just for your knowledge. Uh, so a function is a reusable block of code that performs a specific set of instructions that you define or that are built, in, uh, built into the language, right? So when we looked at dot map dot length, those are basically uh, built in functions on a specific type of object that is uh, defined by uh, JavaScript, right? So dot length. Uh, 
all you see is dot length, but somewhere in the bowels of JavaScript, somebody has written a code that goes through and basically counts through your array and then returns the length for you. And so the built-in saves us time on um, commonly used things that we need to do, but anything that you see like in the MDM docs, like that big long list of, of built-ins, you can actually write that code yourself. And a lot of times in bootcamp or like in this class, like we'll look at writing it ourselves uh, versus just using the built-in. So we talked about like you, and you just paste the code and you don't understand what's going on, right? Like we could just use a dot map and one line of code to do it, but we're probably gonna end up writing a for loop. Or when I go through the explanation, I'm gonna write a for loop, which is gonna be several lines of code long, but you actually see what's happening behind the scenes and it makes it a little bit easier to understand while you're learning. Um, functions can be defined to accept zero or more inputs, which we refer to as parameters. And in most cases, output uh, a return value. So uh, cases output a value is called returning. So you see this return down here. To declare a new function, use the function keyword followed by the name of the function, uh, which is the old way. And then when a return statement is encountered and the function exists immediately returning the return value. All right, so do we cover the, yeah. So there's a couple of different ways to do it. This is the newest way, the fat arrow. So um, let's go ahead and cover these slides and we'll head over to the REPL and I'll point some things out and then we'll probably be done for the evening. And I'll, I'll hang out, at, class is over at nine central time. Um, Everyone can punch out whenever they want to. I'm not gonna chase anyone down. I will hang out to answer questions. Uh, so if you wanna hang out after class, you've got questions, um, feel free, I'll, I'll be here. Um, I, I've got nowhere else to go tonight. Um, so what are functions? Uh, calling or invoking a function to execute the instructions or task, pass in any arguments, right? So this is a function declaration. So right here, we're calling the function. When you do this, this doesn't do anything. You declare the function, but you actually have to call the function for something to happen. And we'll, we'll talk about that as well. There are three ways to declare a function. Um, anonymous functions will be, um, you won't use a lot of those in this class or really in Code Platoon. Um, they're typically a little bit harder to understand what's going on because you don't give get a chance to name them. And we're going to use our names of our functions to help us explain what's going on and so that we remember what's going on, right? So like, um, and this just says name, but like if I were to do something like this and I look at it, let answer equal num1 plus num2, I would call this like add or addition, right? And so then later on when I see the call of addition one and two, I already kind of know what's gonna come out of this function, right? But when you have an anonymous function and you don't give it a name, sometimes it can be a little bit more difficult to understand what's going on. Again, these are the very basic building blocks, but when we start getting into more complex functions and it's not readily apparent what might be coming out the other end, it's always good to give your, um, so there, there's two people that read your code, other developers and your future self. And so what I will tell you is be kind to your future self, right? You, uh, I've now been on the same project for two and a half years. I will open up a piece of code and be like, who wrote this garbage piece of code? And then I'll look at it and be like, oh, I wrote that garbage piece of code two years ago, right? So you just always want to be kind to your future self. Uh, third way is fat arrow functions. This is one of the more common ways today. But just, and so this is ES6 or the ECMAScript 6, popularized in 2015. This is pretty much the standard way that you'll see it now. This does this, does this, this, does this, does this. All three of these things do the exact same thing. You will see all of them out there in the wild. Um, but just knowing that like this, does this, does this, that's all you really need to know. Uh, all right, so let's go ahead and take a look at some functions here real quick.
All right. So let me go ahead and comment that out. All right. So functions. Now I can say, so I, I basically wrote all the way up here, if you remember, like I, I took a, a map, which is a built in function, and I looped through all the names in my array and said, um, like, add coolest to it. And then I saved it as a variable. So I saved that piece of information in one spot in the application. And that's it was done once. That's all there is to it. Right now, what if I said, you know, I, I, I want to make an application to make people feel better about themselves. And I want it whenever I need it to, I want it to take someone's name and tell them that they're the coolest. Right. And it could be, well, you're using one part of the application. It could pop up in another part of the application. Maybe by the time we get done going over the requirements, there's 33 different places in my application that I need to tell people that they're the coolest, right? So what I'm going to do is say, oops. Right. And so this is my function. And so what I'm going to do is now say return. Right. And so now when I run my application, nothing happened. Right. Like nothing spit out over here. So I have told my program that there is a function out there called you cool, right? It takes in a name, it takes that name, puts it in a string saying name, you are the coolest and it returns it, right? So now if I do, right, what's gonna happen here? I don't think anything's going to happen because you cool Charles is after the, the coolest, your function, the you cool function. Wait, well, so it, it, that you are right for the wrong reason. Um, nothing is going to happen that you can see because I am no longer console.logging. I'm actually returning, right? And so when I return, console.log is telling me to take a piece of information and log it to the console. When I return, I'm just returning basically at the end of the day, const you cool is going to equal this, right? And then unless I tell it to console.log this, you won't see anything, but it won't fail, right? So if I take this, There it is. So this is a tricky, con this is an easy concept, but it's tricky in the beginning. Returning is returning something out of a method. It is not sending it to the console. Uh, it's probably like the number one asked question in intro to coding where people will say like, you know, I'm doing my method, here it is. I'm not seeing it in the console. It's because now when you start dealing with functions, you're returning, right? I could replace this return with console.log. Right. And now if I do this, I can say right. And so now I see Todd, you're the coolest. But watch this. So if I say console.log So, whoops, let me get rid of that one. So now I'm seeing two things, right? I'm coming into my function, I'm console.logging, Todd, you are the coolest. And then I also see undefined, right? So because 
basically what happens is I come into my function, I run console.log and I'm done. That's it. Like I never return anything out of my function. So you cool is when I console.log it down here, even though it fired off this console.log, you cool actually just looks like this, right? To the computer. It just looks like an instantiated you cool. I never assigned it a value. And that's the difference between returning and console.log. Because it's the same thing. Like I could now go return. This has nothing to do with being cool. Right? Now I have console.log out of here. There is nothing, uh, or you, Todd, you are the coolest. And now I'm returning this string. This has nothing to do with being cool. Right. And so now you, it's const you cool equals the string. This has nothing to do with being cool, even though this got fired off while it was in there. And you see it go into the console. You, and because the same thing, like if I take you cool out of the console log down here, you only see this, right? Like we don't see what I returned out of here. And again, don't worry if you don't get it right away. Uh, just know that console.logging sends it to the console, returning it, returns it out of the, the function so that it can be used in a different part of the application. Hmm. You have a question? Uh, does someone have a question? Um. I didn't realize my microphone wasn't muted. Someone came up to me. Oh, no worries. So, and same thing here. Like what we we're talking about. So as I can say function more cool name, right? And this, like if I if I take these out of here and put them in here. This is doing the exact same thing as this. It's just, so we, we can even do this. We can say old cool, new cool. Right, and so these two functions will, even though they look slightly different, will do the exact same thing when you call them, right? So I can say, Do new cool Todd, old cool Charles. All right. Whoops. What did I do? This has nothing to do with being cool. What did I blow up? Ah, I didn't close my string because I didn't copy enough of it. There we go. Todd, you are the coolest. Charles, you are the coolest. All right. So these, even though they look different, and I'm not console.logging, so I'm not seeing my return. I'm just seeing the console.log that's firing off in each of these. They look different, do the exact same thing. So uh, I'm not fully following, I guess, what is the purpose of the return in that situation? You said it would be used later on in the application. So, so it just gets set aside for now? It, it, well, so moreover, this is for informational purposes. I've got, like I said, I've got a piece of software I've been working on for three years with like 1.1 million lines of code in it. Not a single one of them is a console.log. You do not, you like, this is for informational purposes only. You use it to send things to the console while you're writing code. Like if I wanna know what a variable is, um, functions return information so that they can be used by other functions, by other parts of the application. Okay, that makes sense. Yeah, so you'll see console.log a lot in the beginning, um, but like once you move past the beginning levels, you don't use console.log for anything. You'll, you'll other than like while you're developing, like a finished piece of software should not have console.logs in it. All okay. right, cool. So uh, let's see here. Yeah, so I think we're at about time for the evening. Uh, I will, because again, 
This one is the most talking for me. Uh, I've been going for three hours nonstop. Uh, I will throw conditional logic and loops and built-in methods, which we already kind of talked about um, into uh, the beginning of session two, because session two, all we have is the intro to the REPL uh, formatting and clean code, which we already kind of talked about, and that's it, right? So even by moving those other two sections to tomorrow, we've maybe got about 45 minutes of me talking, and then we're going to fire up REPL, and we're going to start getting into the challenges. So as I promised, um, it's basically it's nine o'clock. I'm going to stop recording right now, and but I am going to hang out and I am more than happy to answer any questions that anyone has for me.